So, we've talked about the sick aging phenotype and exercise medicine and the power of a rational exercise prescription to stave off and prevent the degenerative diseases of aging. We've talked about the difference between training and exercise, and we've introduced the concept of the athlete of aging, the master's athlete. We've taken a lot of time and effort to lay the groundwork. Now it's time to get down to brass tacks and talk about the actual formulation of our exercise medicine. As we've discussed here before, I think our exercise medicine has to meet very specific criteria. It has to be safe. It has to have a wide therapeutic window, a wide range of safe and effective doses that can be manipulated precisely. It has to be comprehensive. We want our exercise medicine to cover as many fitness attributes as possible. Our exercise prescription must attack the sick aging phenotype. It must be specific and effective. And finally, we need our exercise prescription to be efficient and as simple as possible, but no simpler. What fits the bill? Barbells. Hi, I'm Jonathan Sullivan, and welcome back to Gray Steel. Athletes of aging have no shortage of exercise modalities to choose from, and no shortage of fitness attributes upon which to focus their exercise, or preferably their training. There's yoga, tai chi, crossfit, swimming, walking, cycling, ballroom dancing, rock climbing, martial arts, you name it. There's a broad tendency to think of all exercises as fitting into a bimodal categorization, strength training and cardio. And a lot of the activities I just named are in a gray zone in between, covering elements of both. But most of these activities are more properly thought of as practiced rather than trained. For example, rock climbing might be your bliss, but it's not going to be a good general exercise prescription for the aging adult or a good general training modality for the athlete of aging. We need something that checks all the boxes, can be learned and instituted quickly, can be dosed precisely and progressively, and is safe and effective for the largest number of people. As I argue at length in the book I wrote with Andy Baker, The Barbell Prescription, I think strength training combined with a very simple conditioning program is the exercise prescription of choice for the aging adult. Strength training arrests and reverses the age-related decline in muscle mass, particularly the type 2 fibers that give us strength and power. Strength training stresses bones and promotes bone mineral density, particularly in the spine and hips. If properly conducted, strength training makes us, well, stronger, which means it also makes us more powerful. And that's huge as we get older. Properly designed strength training programs promote better mobility and physical function, balance, insulin sensitivity, cardiovascular health, and greater resistance to illness and injury. The key phrase here, of course, is properly conducted. As with exercise itself, there's a bounty of strength training options to choose from. How should we formulate our strength training program? We got bow flexes, we got shake weights, we got body weight training, and bands, and dumbbells, and barbells, and nautilus machines and all kinds of fancy fads and gizmos to choose from. And that's just the formulation. Then we have to worry about how we actually prescribe and dose the strength training. That is, how we program it. At Graysteel, we train people from their 40s to their 90s and make them stronger with barbells. When it comes to strength training for the athlete of aging, or anybody else for that matter, I'm a strong proponent of barbells, a decidedly low-tech, non-fancy approach to strength. Barbells are, let's face it, old school. And part of the reason for that is that they really, really work. Let me tell you why, from my own perspective, the perspective of exercise prescription requirements. First of all, barbells are safe. The reasons for this are manifold. One of them has to do with our second criteria, dosing. 
Another is the very nature of properly conducted barbell training. You're going to hear this over and over again, so get ready. Barbells allow us to efficiently and precisely load normal human movement patterns through a complete and natural range of motion. There are no weird positions, no dysfunctional or injurious joint moments, just normal human movement patterns that make up the brick and mortar of our physical existence. Barbell training is properly conducted on stable surfaces at precisely and rationally determined loads that the athlete can handle indoors in a way that minimizes unpredictable forces and gets the athlete progressively stronger. Our second criteria was dosing, or more precisely, a wide therapeutic window. And here, barbells rule. Virtually any degree of loading can be prescribed for barbell training, from a broomstick to several hundred pounds and everything in between, in increments as small as a half a pound. When you add in the additional dosing parameters of sets and reps and rest and recovery, barbells allow for the most exquisite dosing of any form of exercise medicine, period. For our third criterion, we wanted a comprehensive exercise prescription, one that hits all the general fitness attributes. Barbells rule here too. Obviously, barbell training builds strength. And when we improve strength, we also improve power, or what some exercise physiologists call speed strength. Because properly conducted barbell training expresses normal human movement patterns through a complete and natural range of motion, barbell training improves mobility. The most powerful barbell exercises are performed standing up with the bar on the back or in the hands which introduces the possibility that you could fall down. Not falling down is a requirement of all the exercises, and so training with barbells trains the fitness attribute of balance. And yes, barbell training promotes endurance, particularly in previously untrained and deconditioned individuals. As training progresses, we usually find it necessary to introduce a very simple, time-efficient conditioning component, like hit or sled pushes. We want our exercise prescription to be specific and effective, which in the present context means that we want it to attack the sick aging phenotype. As we've discussed here previously, the sick aging phenotype is a meta-syndrome of unhealthy aging, which encompasses insulin resistance, loss of muscle mass and bone density, and frailty, components that lead to a lot of downstream nastiness and suffering. Strength training attacks all of these root components of the sick aging phenotype. If you want the gory details on this, you know where to look. Our book, The Barbell Prescription, contains literally hundreds of citations of biomedical literature on this topic. Finally, we want our exercise prescription to be simple and efficient. Four or five exercises, two or three days a week, a three or four hour weekly commitment. That's all I ask. At Graysteel, we get this done with squats, deadlifts, presses, bench presses, and high-intensity interval conditioning, usually with bikes or sleds, but sometimes with other modalities, in just two 90-minute sessions a week. And we find that just about everybody can do it, Riding and hits. everybody who Riding does do up. it gets stronger and healthier. In future episodes, we're going to talk a lot about these exercises how they're performed, how they're modified or adapted for individuals with specific limitations, how they're programmed and refined and coached, and why each of them fits the bill as part of a comprehensive exercise prescription.